Hello everybody, Sanyar, Engineer, MBA, and Investor. And in today's video, I wanna talk about Sana Biotechnology. I've made a video on this company in the past, but I wanna revisit their corporate PowerPoint that they released recently, starting 2022. I wanna talk about this company, several thoughts about it, and how we can look at this company, this space, and why it is important for us to look at these new technologies. But before we jump into today's video, you guys know the drill, subscribe if you're not subscribed, like this video, destroy that like button, guys, it's quick, it's free, it's easy, and hit that notification bell if you wanna go a step further. So this corporate presentation, like I said, January, 2022, it's a new corporate presentation, but not much has changed for this company considering the fact that there is no commercial product yet. Uh, their pipeline looks very solid. They have a couple of programs on the way or filing INDs. Um, but again, like we see here on the slide, um, we're looking at two to three INDs per year going forward. Uh, and the goal is for LOT and in vivo car T INDs this year. Uh, and then, you know, the idea is, is, is this company is positioned in a way where they can actually invest in their company very, very well because they hold over $866 million cash at the end of the third quarter of 2021. This is significant money, right? And then the next question you should be asking is how were they able to gain that much money without a single dollar of revenue? Well, it's through public markets, right? This is why companies go public, right? They raise money through the IPO, they sell secondary shares, and then they basically uh, raise more funds throughout their public markets tenure, right? This is what we've seen companies like CRISPR Therapeutics and TLA, all these companies do in the past is they basically sell their shares at the market price in the public markets, which is completely legal. And it's a great strategy for companies to raise funds and basically have cash in the bank. And the reason why this is important, the reason why this is important is because we know today as a technology company, if you don't have cash, and this is your gateway to bankruptcy. So you definitely want cash in your balance sheet. And why not? You know, I think without having a single revenue product, this is literally the best thing you could do early on, right? Because you want to reinvest in the business. So Sana goals, you know, repairing cells in the body when possible, replace them when needed. Uh, I think they're doing something very novel. And I think we'll see that shortly here. But uh, what they're doing is literally, in my opinion, a competition to Caribou Biosciences in a way. Although they're using a different technology, uh, when it comes to CAR T cells, they're doing it through Allo CAR T, which is what Caribou is also doing for phase one uh, for CBO010 from Caribou Biosciences, which we are expecting data this year, the first half of this year, hopefully. And this is a little bit of their platform, right? Obviously, we talked about it. Uh, this The technology they're using, Fusogen, uh, it's very known uh, for them. They're known for it, you know, in vivo cell engineering, the ex vivo hyperimmune. Uh, this is a term we're going to be seeing shortly for their T cells. So oncology, I think it's amazing area therapeutic. I think this is the next phase. I think for many of these companies, CAR T cells, you know, because this is how you combat multiple cancers, right? And I'm just going to go short here. I'm going to go over the slide number 12, right? So this is what Sana's hypimmune halo T is potentially best in class for, right? So there, there's a couple of immune challenge for the current halo T programs that are out there. And Sana Biotechnology, they're claiming that they overcome any of these challenges you're looking at, right? Adaptive immune system, innate immune system. And the idea is that you have uh, donor or iPSC T cells, you engineer it to the technology, and basically you can, you know, CD19 targeted HIP allogenic T cells, right? And then at that point, they can basically claim that they can overcome any of these hyper, uh, any of these immune challenges, right? And then you have a couple of data here, and I don't know how far I wanna go with this data here, looking at it for this video, but I really love these types of data because visually you can see here on the untreated, uh, untreated mice here, and then you compare it with what you know, Sana is, is specializing in, and clearly you can see the difference for you, right? Red means bad, and then white basically means going back to uh, its normal state, or at least a healthy state. And clearly here you can see the one that are unmodified CAR T cells, uh, you even have some that are dying actually here. Um, so it is what it is. Clearly here, hype, 
whatever hyperimmune CAR T cells SANA is trying to focus on is clearly the best route when you compare it visually with these mice here on the screen. And then you had a, a yes carta here data here. So they're competing with a certain metric, right? Which I find really interesting because you have this company that doesn't really have data on humans and they don't even have IND filing yet, although they plan on having a couple this year. Uh, they're comparing data with previously, you know, product previously received, and they have certain metrics, right? With complete rate response. And I think this is what they're gonna be competing with when it comes to uh, um, CAR T therapy. And I, I, I love the fact that they're having certain metrics that they wanna beat, right? And clearly here you can see CD19, CD, um, CD22, their their timeline here this this year, they're, they're potentially doing as early as this year for CD19. So very excited to see what happens. They're also tackling type one diabetes, which I found really, really interesting. Uh, obviously, you know, we all know what's going on with CRISPR therapeutics and Viacite, but this is obviously a different type of technology. Uh, you don't have to worry about the Viacite proprietary technology that, that Viacite is trying to bet on. Uh, that I made a past video on, so uh, go to watch that video if you want to know more. But really, type 1 diabetes is a large unmet need, right? This is a very significant problem in North America, in Europe, in all regions around the world, right? And we have no cure. We have certain alternatives to sort of minimize the risk and the damage from type 1 diabetes patients or type 2 diabetes patients, but there is no cure. And I find that extremely uh, promising that um, Sana Biotechnology, they want to venture into that. So I do want to jump to this slide here, 18, 19. And if we take a look at that here, right, you know, we're looking at these stem cells derived from pancreatic isolate cells lead to robust function, right? And it looks like what it looks like what uh, Sana Biotechnology they're trying to achieve here is this, um, they're trying to achieve this goal where, you know, they can modify, they can modify in vitro and then basically rescue a type one diabetes mouse model, right? And what's interesting is they're comparing this with different, different uh, procedures, right? See human isolates, Washu, Sana Tech, right? Then you have PAG, Liaokao technology. And I, I think this is great because then you get to a point where here, uh, in this slide here, you get allogenetic human hypoimmune isolate cells. And clearly here, you can see here the difference, right? And you can see that because it it shows you the, the difference between their technology and what happens when you don't modify uh, isolate cells, right? So Clearly here, they're betting on this, they're betting on that fact. They do have data on mice, but again, this is this is not uh, this is not really on humans, so we can't really extract that data. I mean, we gotta be fair across all companies in this space. We often say that. Um, Hypeimmune pancreatic isolate cells ev evade autoimmune killing in testing blood of type, of type one diabetes patients. Uh, so clearly here you can see here the difference between unmodified islet cells and hyperimmune islet cells. And clearly here you can see that it is much, much better. Just by visually, you can see that. Um, now, you can also see here, and I found that interesting as a graph, is they say here that, you know, if you compare this with unmodified hyperimmune, there is no killing in both cases. And in this case here, you do have a certain type of killing uh, uh, potential, right? Basically being lethal. And this is being non-lethal, which is clearly the big, big topic, right? If you can make something non-lethal and you can save a person's life, then, you know, it doesn't matter at that point. Is it 59% complete response, 60%? It doesn't matter, right? You're, it's not even, you're not even comparing uh, apple to apple, you're comparing apple to oranges, right? One that is potentially lethal and not, uh, and not uh, curable and the other method you're actually curing a particular disease. So just wanted to go over this and this slide, these slides, couple of slides here. What it, my goal here was really to go over this company here in this in this video, just go over some of what they do, what it looks, it looks like this year. As I promised in this channel earlier this year, I'm gonna try to branch out from just CRISPR companies. And obviously this is not a CRISPR company, although, although they do hold a partnership with Beam Therapeutics to hold proprietary exclusive rights to a specific technology that they licensed out. 
Uh, so I'm curious to see what you guys think in this video. Let me know what you guys think about this company. What are you like, most excited about for Sana Biotechnology? Thank you so much for watching. Do like this video if you found value from it. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. And we will see each other in the next video on Saturday. Thank you so much for watching.